Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is about to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I have some bad news for you. Being a Christian is simple, but it's not easy. St. Mark wrote, believe and be baptized and you will be saved. Sounds simple, right? But believe in Jesus when your reason and your senses tell a different story. Trust in the word of God in and with the water that does these great things. Well, simple, but not so easy. Now, Christians have resolved this tension in two different and false ways. On the one hand, some Christians just make the Christian faith more complex. So they add all sorts of traditions and rituals, hoops to be jumped through, and obligate many or all to follow after them. They'll emphasize your doing, that is, your works over faith. They make a huge deal out of obedience rather than trust in Jesus. More and more laws with strict demands and severe penalties predominate. Holy days of obligation, mandatory fastings, and the like. Young and old, then, are taught to think that the life of the Christian is a long list of thou shalts and thou shalt nots, with a little grace at hand for when you slip up. That's one side of the coin. The other hand, some Christians just make life as a Christian easy. They reject the regular hearing of God's word and the frequent receiving of Christ's gifts of forgiveness in his body and blood. They are nice. Those things are nice for you to receive when you can get around to them or when you feel like them. But that's it. They too emphasize works over faith, obedience over trust, but not churchy ritual works, but rather acts of service, mandatory acts of love. All the while, though, living apart from Christ and his word. They have no rule of faith and no commitment to Christ and his church. But I'm a Christian in my heart, even though I don't really receive Jesus and his word, they say. So they'll say that the regular, ongoing ministry of word and sacrament are unnecessary and just simply optional. Neither position is true. God in Christ does speak in ways of command and promise, law and gospel. It's simple. You are 100% sinner, completely dependent upon Jesus for forgiveness, life, and salvation. But that's not easy. Your flesh rebels against Jesus and his word and his work. You believe, and yet you often doubt You know what you ought to do, but you don't do it. You know what you are not to do, and yet that's the thing you want to do all the time. Who can save you from your flesh? Jesus and his word alone. Also, it's not easy because temptation comes from every direction. You know the lies that you tell yourself regarding God's holy word. You know quite well how to deceive yourself. But you also know all too well the lies of the deceiver himself that he whispers in your ears day and night. Your flesh has an ally that prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour your faith and your life in Jesus. He speaks, and that's how he deceives. He gives you idea, faith pathogens into your little ears, earworms, that infect and distort the truth that you've come to learn and know from your baptism. The Christian life is simple, but it's not easy. And that's what Jesus was about in the upper room in our gospel today as he was catechizing his disciples and, of course, catechizing you, 
specifically as to the attacks of this world. The enemies of the church, which assaulted and murdered him, they will turn on you too. They hated Jesus without just cause, and so they will hate you without cause. Don't believe me? Just go read the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapters 3 through 28. Over and over, the disciples are rejected because of the Jesus they preach by the world. It's just one long account of the suffering of Christ's disciples. A suffering that they count as joy. So we see from the Acts of the Apostles that the Christian faith is simple, but it's never been easy. Especially because of the attitudes and the actions of the world. It's hostility towards Jesus. But I said I had some bad news. There is good news today, too. Jesus has armed you for this fight, and he goes with you, even before you, into the battle. How does he arm you? Well, in his catechesis, Jesus told you today to expect hatred from the world because you trust in him. Jesus himself was constantly hated without cause. Murderous Herod hated him and sought to kill him as an infant. His own kinsmen and family once thought of him quite highly in wisdom and stature, but then turned on him when his preaching pointed out their sins. And then they lashed out in hatred. It's hatred without a just cause because he is the just one. And eventually it resulted in Jesus' unjust trial, as Pilate himself called it, and an unjust death. The sinless dying for the sinful. His task was simple. Proclaim the truth which he had spoken from the foundation of the world. Do the salvation work the Father sent him to do. Win for himself a holy bride, the church, through his self-giving, sac sacrificial love. It's not complex, it's simple, but it was far from easy. The sinful man hates God in Christ Jesus, preached in his word and believed through the gifts of the Spirit. The sinful man hates God in Christ Jesus. Thus Jesus is warning you not to terrify you or to frighten you, to make it seem as if you should just give up on this whole faith thing, but rather to prepare you to see the attack coming, to guard yourself, to be armed. And being prepared by him, you will not fail. You will not fall away. Your faith will not be overcome. So why are you surprised when you experience fiery trial? Why are you surprised that you are mocked and ridiculed by the world, friends, and even family for your commitment to Christ Jesus and to this congregation? It happened to Jesus. Why wouldn't it happen to you? And so today, increasingly so, the public brands you as idiots or morons for trusting in Jesus over and against policymakers, pundits, authoritarians, even scientists. You are called science deniers, cult followers, ethnic supremacists, dissidents, even seditionists, simply for trusting in Jesus. Your friends probably think you're nuts for faithfully attending divine service week in and week out. Your family can't understand why it's impossible for you to gather with them when it's time to be with the saints on a holiday. That is, a holy day, a feast of Jesus Christ. But don't be distracted. The world would have you think that their animosity and even hatred is just about your ethical or moral choices. It's not that alone. It is that to be sure, but the choices that you make, your ethical and moral life is guided by the freedom you have in Jesus Christ. The freedom to live in this world without fear. Jesus said, everyone who is of the truth, that's him, hears my voice. He also says of the Father, your word is truth. Jesus is the word of the Father and he is the truth. 
And the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. But the world has no interest in the truth, even declaring what is truth. Back in John chapter 9, Jesus had actually prophesied in a similar way. He had told those gathered with him in the synagogue that those who confessed him as Messiah to the Jews would be cast out of the synagogue. They would be excommunicated simply for believing Jesus is the Savior. In Jesus, there's forgiveness of sins. And right away in the next chapter of John, John chapter 9, that's exactly what they did to the formerly blind man. And of course, that's what they did to Jesus' own disciples in the book of Acts. They kicked them out simply because they trusted in Jesus. And that's what they'll do to you if you're so bold to confess him out loud in the world. All those who hated Jesus and hated his disciples, well, they hate you too. And they hate you even thinking at the same time that God is happy with them. How can that be? How could they think that God is pleased with them and their hatred of you unless they are worshiping a different God? Not God in Christ, but some God of their own choosing. Christian faith is simple, but it's not easy. It's not easy to confess Jesus Christ before the world, but it is good. Jesus uses this trial by fire to test and to prove your faith. Those little skirmishes that you have are preparation for a great war. And in the midst of the battle, Jesus brings you into his holy armory, the church, to equip you with the truth. And it is by way of the truth that you can resist and stand firm against every lie, deceit, and error of this world and its false teachers that seek to lead you away from the Christian church, away from Christ, and away from his salvation. So the triune God, and especially the Holy Spirit, tells you the truth about yourself. Your sinfulness is so great that it cannot be comprehended. It's a hard word to hear. It must be believed. And likewise, even more so, the love of God in Christ is so great that he died for you and for the sins of the whole world. Well, that's hard to believe, impossible to believe, too. It must be believed. And thus, God the Holy Spirit comes to you and equips you with the sword that is the Word of God. The Spirit attacks and defends for you day and night through the Word. It is this gospel of Jesus' forgiveness that fights against the devil, the world, and your own flesh. It's Christ the valiant one who fights for you and who arms you for the fight. Take up the Holy Spirit sword then, the gospel, to fight these enemies. It's not going to be easy, but it is good. When the devil accuses you of sin, use the gospel word, I am forgiven in Jesus, to drive him back. When the world tempts you with all of its glitter and shininess, use the gospel word, I have an even better treasure in Jesus to drive the world back. And when your flesh tempts you to unspeakable evils, use that gospel word, I am baptized into Jesus, to protect you from yourself. And when the occasion arises for you to testify to others, to this world, take up again the sword of the Spirit, the gospel of Jesus Christ, as your sure defense and your only hope. Jesus died for you and for the sins of the world. It's simple, but it's not easy, except by Jesus through his Spirit. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.